Friends, have you noticed that the weather has been changing? In some places I have heard it has been flooding and others are suffering from drought. Why is this happening? There have been big changes to the earth over recent years which have led to these problems. We need to understand what is going on, so you must listen carefully. We are going to talk about important agreements being made by governments to deal with these problems which will affect us. Before I tell you more, let us understand why these agreements have come about. People live on earth. People live in many different ways, but we are connected together by being human and knowing that earth is our only home. We, as indigenous peoples, live in the forest. We know the land here better than any other. We know the healing plants and the places to drink. The spirits of the forest have always been good to us, as we have been good to them. The forest is like a friend. If we take, we must give back, or we will lose our friendship. But now we see that things are changing. We can no longer rely on the knowledge that has been passed on from our parents. We used to know when the rains would come, the right time to plant seeds, but now it rains at the wrong time, if at all. The rivers are different. The forest is changing and the animals no longer guide us. Why? People outside the village have told me the earth is getting warmer and that's why things are changing. The earth has become warmer and colder before, but this time people are to blame. But I've also been told that we know how to start to solve this problem. What, what is it that's happened? It's a long answer. You must be patient. The first thing that we must learn is a word. That word is carbon. It is something that is a part of almost everything around you. The charcoal that you use to cook your food is carbon. When you write with a pencil, it's carbon that you see on the paper. Carbon is found in every living thing on Earth. Much of your body is made of carbon. So why are you talking about carbon? Is it this that's causing the problem? Since the Earth was created, there has always been carbon. In the past, this carbon was stored safely in the oceans, land, plants and animals around us. Everything was in balance. If carbon moved from one place, it was taken in by another place. Then things changed. In recent times, because of people, the carbon released into the air is much more than the Earth can take back. It is industrialized countries who are guilty of doing this. Cars, ships, aeroplanes, factories, mining and making electricity all release carbon. The Earth has become like a house without a chimney. The carbon's got nowhere to go. Now, the actual carbon that is making a problem is called carbon dioxide. You can't see it. You can't smell it. It's a gas, part of the air. When you breathe, you make carbon dioxide. When vegetables rot, it creates carbon dioxide. It's a natural thing, but it's just that we are now making too much of it. Why does carbon dioxide make the Earth warmer? Good question. The sun shines on us, giving light and heat. In the past, some of this light and heat was reflected away, which kept Earth the perfect temperature. But now the extra carbon dioxide in the air traps the heat that used to escape. This means the Earth is getting warmer, and this is making things change. What kinds of things will happen if the Earth gets warmer? Well, if the Earth is warmer, it means that more water goes into the air from the oceans, so more rain will fall in some areas and cause flooding. In some countries, because the air is so much hotter, the water in the air cannot turn into rain and that means drought. If it becomes hotter, there will be wildfires. Diseases, insects and plants will move either to get away from or grow with the warmth. This is why the people of the Earth need to take carbon dioxide out of the air and stop it from being made. Now, this is where we, as indigenous peoples living in forests, become part of the story. One of the ways carbon dioxide is taken from the air is by forests. Trees take the carbon dioxide into their bodies, where it's stored. That's great, but why are we talking about this? 
Well, around the Earth, every minute of every day, huge amounts of forests are destroyed, meaning there are less trees to take in the carbon dioxide. What makes it worse is that cutting down trees, leaving waste wood to rot, creates even more carbon dioxide. In fact, right now, the cutting down of forests makes more carbon dioxide than all the cars, trains, ships and planes put together. The people who study these things know that the destruction of the forest is mainly due to industrialized countries. Their demand for wood and land for planting crops like rubber trees and palm oil or raising animals have helped create this problem. They know that it is not indigenous peoples that are causing the problem with forest destruction or degradation. Now the eyes of the earth are upon countries and people with forests to help solve the carbon dioxide problem. They are looking to us for help. Governments who are responsible for reducing carbon dioxide are doing two things. Firstly, agreements are being made to reduce the carbon dioxide that is being made by industrialized countries. Secondly, they are developing agreements to slow down and maybe stop the destruction of forests. This is the agreement I was talking about at the beginning. This agreement is called RED+. Plus. RED stands for Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation. Simply put, the Red Plus Agreement is that payment will be made to developing countries to not cut down their forests, but to keep them for taking out the carbon dioxide in the air and to not create more carbon dioxide by cutting them down. They must make it more valuable for a tree to be left standing. But it's more than this. Red Plus also wants to bring back the traditional plants and animals, develop the forests and reduce poverty in areas where it'll take place. This is a time when industrialized countries will have to take responsibility for what they have done. They will have to learn to look at forests in a different way. Understand that they will have to pay to keep the forests as well as reduce the carbon dioxide they make. But please, let's not forget that not only are forests an important natural resource for the Earth, but they are also the rightful home to at least 300 million indigenous peoples like us. For us, a forest is not just about carbon. The forest is who we are and what makes us unique, as well as providing us with our livelihoods. It'll cost money to stop their destruction and maintain them. But without forests, the earth and us will die. Now listen to this. If governments are looking at controlling forests as part of a Red Plus agreement, this will affect us. There will be changes in laws and governance and we will be on the front line. It's possible we might not even be allowed in the forest. What would happen to us then? We can and must take part and have our voices heard, but not as a people left on the side, but as a central part of Red Plus. It's our future and the Earth's that's now in our hands. How can you say this? No one listens to us, but what about our rights? Under this Red Plus Agreement, it is required that the rights and traditional knowledge of indigenous peoples and local communities shall be respected. This is because indigenous peoples insisted that their rights be recognized in the Red Plus Agreement. Red Plus requires that we, as indigenous peoples, shall have full and effective participation in all phases of Red Plus. This means that governments will have to consult and involve us. All of this is written down and recognized under the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples. We will call this the Declaration. This took 20 years of work by indigenous peoples' representatives, our people, working with governments to finally have these rights recognized. Simply put, it states that the way we want to live is as valid as any other peoples of the earth, that we deserve the right to live in our own way and decide our own future on our own terms. It also states that indigenous peoples have rights to their lands, territories and resources as well as to their traditional livelihoods. 
As part of the declaration, there is even more protection for indigenous peoples to make sure that we play a central role in the decision-making on matters that affect us, including Red Plus and other agreements. This is called FPIC. FPIC means free, prior and informed consent. This guides how the government and others must work with indigenous peoples in the Red Plus agreement process. Firstly, free, that the participation of indigenous peoples like ourselves will be free from intimidation or pressure. Secondly, prior, they will ensure that they'll give all indigenous peoples the time and support we need to take part in Red Plus in our own way. Thirdly, informed, they will tell us everything we need to know in ways we can understand. They will answer any questions we have. We will be provided with any information that we ask for. Fourthly, consent. That we will make our decision on anything to do with Red Plus in our own way, in our own time. If we, as indigenous peoples, say no, then whatever is proposed will not be able to go ahead. We must make sure that our decisions are based on the well-being and common interests of our people and the Earth. We must use this power wisely and work with trusted partners to support us. The Declaration is an important part of the Red Plus Agreement. In the past, the rights, well-being and the knowledge of indigenous peoples have not been recognized or appreciated by those who have wanted access to our forests. But how can a Red Agreement work for all countries? The Red Plus Agreement is not fixed. It is made so each country can adapt it for itself. This is why we must be part of its development from the very start, in order that we can help shape the way it looks. Let's talk more about Red Plus. There are three phases to the Red Plus Agreement. The first phase is to make sure each country is ready to take part by planning what needs to be done and building confidence that it can deliver on its promises. As I said, this could include changes in forest laws and governance. This is why we indigenous peoples must take part to protect ourselves. This is the stage we're at now. The second phase is bringing these promises to life alongside commitment on how the benefits will be shared. There will be test projects to make sure we can measure how much carbon dioxide we take out of the air and how much carbon dioxide we can stop from being made. In this phase, we will establish where the money will come from that will pay for Red Plus in our country. The third phase is the running of Red Plus. The more we reduce carbon dioxide, the more we will benefit. But this is not just about money. This is about allowing us to live the way we want and keeping the forest how it should be. Countries taking part in Red Plus must operate in a transparent and non-corrupt manner. People inside and outside the country will be watching independently to ensure the project is properly run. We need to understand how Red Plus will be set up in our own country and ensure that we play a central part in its development. I want to talk about something else that we should be thinking about. In our village, people contribute to the well-being of our community in many different ways. I want to ask you, are all the voices in our community being listened to and appreciated? There is no one here who would deny the roles our mothers, wives, daughters and sisters play in our communities. They are the ones who take on the burdens of bearing children, teaching them and nursing the ill. They are the ones who collect the firewood, tend the crops and cook the food. They are often the ones with traditional knowledge of what the forests can supply. They are the ones who must make do with what they have. We must be proud and ensure they too are part of our voice and have shared ownership of the forests. We must do this for the sake of our future, for they are a central part of our present. A just society recognizes the contribution and participation of women as equals. Let us not forget this.
our community is made of men and women. Without each other, we would be half of what we are now. We may have some different needs, but we have a common purpose. This is why it will make the voice of the community stronger if we take part. We live closely with the Earth. Our simple lifestyle does not create more carbon than we can take back. This is a lesson that other people can learn from us. It has been proven that the way we cultivate and grow our food does not contribute to the Earth getting warmer. It has been proven that our way of life does not kill the forest, that we can look after it. But we are the ones who will feel the changes of a warming Earth first, so we must take action to protect ourselves as well as the Earth. But to do this we need the security of being respected for the way we want to live and where we want to live. Without recognition of our rights, without us taking part, Red Plus cannot be successful. We can improve our communities and make our lives more secure. This is a win-win situation for the Earth and ourselves. This is the time to strengthen ourselves and assert our rights. Let us not fail to do the best we can for our people, our children and the future of the Earth.